Sekou Smith, Lang Whitaker, and John Schumer from NBA.com here at Quicken Loans Arena, the site of an absolute masterpiece by the Golden State Warriors on the road. Game four of the finals. They show their championship medal, put the, put the wood basically to the Cavaliers yeah. in the second half with their small lineup. Were you as surprised as I was at how many different combinations were tried tonight? We hadn't seen James Michael McAdoo. We didn't see Barbosa. I yeah. mean, just a, a strange turn of events in terms of tweaks and adjustments made by Steve Kerr. McAdoo played three different stints. You know, he played in the first quarter, sat down, came back in the second quarter, sat down, came back in the fourth quarter. James, fourth quarter minutes for James Michael McAdoo, a surprise, but he's sort of another guy that can play in small ball lineups, and small ball has been the key for the Warriors. They've been much better, especially offensively, playing small, either Draymond Green or I guess McAdoo at center. Um, and that's been the key, I think, throughout this whole series. Bo Andrew Bogut's 10 minutes tonight were the fewest he's played uh, all series. Andrew Anderson Barajao was out there for about four minutes, but it was mostly small ball and mostly offense. The 108 points was a lot because it was a really slow-paced game. Slow this was game. Uh, less than 90 possessions uh, for each team in the game, so it was a really, really huge Barajal offensive was out there game. Four minutes, four minutes. Had huge, three yeah. offensive rebounds. And who was, whose appearance was more surprising, James Michael McAdoo or Andrew Bynum? I knew you were going to say that because... <laughs> <laughs> because I was trying to find him in the stands. He was sitting right over there. Yeah, I mean, I was yeah. trying to see where Bynum was. It's, it, you know, Ben Wallace is here. I mean, it's interesting that the yeah. people that come out for finals games. Did this feel like the air came out of the building a little bit in the second half for Cleveland in terms of they had their crowd rocking and rolling early, Lang, and then when the Warriors, specifically the Splash, Splash Brothers, yeah. started splashing, it seemed like the crowd <laughs> realized what was happening. We talked about it after after game three. It felt like. The, the Warriors kind of had the Thunder uh, blueprint put on them again. They, they had the paint taken away from them and out rebounded by 20 in that last game. And then tonight it evened out. They, even though at the beginning of the game, Tristan Thompson was so good in that first quarter, he had to get five offensive rebounds in the first quarter. And then he kind of got on the bench for a while and didn't play for a while and just they kind of fell out of that rotation. I felt like they finished with 20 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. The offense kind of devolved into what it had been those first couple games. and. Um, yeah, I, I just felt like the Cavs kind of lost their mojo. Again. They had a LeBron tip dunk early in the fourth yeah. that put them up two. I think they scored one bat, three points on their next 11 or 12 possessions yeah. after that. LeBron missed two yeah. jumpers right after they got blocked by Draymond. And, yeah. and speaking of the offensive rebounds, the Warriors started offensive yeah. rebounds. They yeah, finished yeah. with a higher offensive rebounding percentage than the, the Cavs did. They may have had one less, but they had fewer missed shots. So. Yeah. They actually had a higher offensive rebounding percentage than Cleveland did by the end of the game. Iguodala had a couple of big ones late in the fourth that turned into second chance points, and, and that so, was huge. Someone told me in game three it was the Warriors, the most second chance points they'd given up in nine years. Wow. And, uh, and then tonight it ends up being closer. They, they yeah. were down by six in that. So. Can we put, can we, I mean, can we literally lay it down, shovel dirt on this whole conversation about Steph Curry? Yeah. Not being an MVP, this is this was an MVP night. This might is when the a, MVP shows up. It might have been a Finals MVP night. Yeah, this I mean this is when it's close. It's close. I mean it's yeah. still close. It's, depending think, on what happens yeah, in I the coming you know coming I'm, minutes, but Andre Iguodala continues to make an argument for another Finals MVP. He's he's a obviously the key component to those small ball lineups. And for the second straight year, he's got the best plus minus in the Finals by a wide margin, mm -hmm. by, I, by ten or more. So. I just feel like. This game turns tonight on the Splash Brothers. Yeah. If they don't show up and do what they did, if they don't provide that punch, right. this, they don't win this game. Because right. Cleveland certainly could have kept Tristan Thompson on the floor and kept pushing their advantage there if the game allowed. But once Steph and Clay started making shots, it, it became obvious what was getting ready to happen. And yeah, the Warriors shot 36% on twos, but yeah. the threes were the diff, as they say here in yeah. Cleveland. <laughs> I don't think there's any question. We all looked at it as if... This was really the series tonight. If Cleveland tied it up, we go back to the West Coast, and, and that is technically the West Coast when we go that far. This is not the East Coast, just for right. anybody. Keep it score. Our friend Jay Adande from ESPN. Yeah, he found out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Midwest, Jay. But uh, to me, this was the series. Yeah. I mean, because now the Warriors have a chance to do what they didn't do last year, and that's close the series out at Oracle. At home. It's going to be bonkers. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable, the atmosphere there. And it was great here. Yeah. But they got a chance to, to finish it the right way in front of their home fans, and I can't imagine they're going to have any sort of 
emotional letdown in a game well, like look, that. You guys have fun out there. All right, I'm going home. I'm going home tomorrow. I've had a long run. I think I think we've eaten our last uh, Cleveland bond me of 2016. Let's pour some out for the Fothang Cafe. We might have to walk past the Fothang tonight and wave goodbye, even though they're closed. Um, Unbelievable performance of, again by the Golden State Warriors and the Splash Brothers bouncing back after some struggles in the first three games of this series. Seku Smith, Lang Whitaker, and John Schumann at Quicken Loans Arena after game four of the finals. We will see you in Oakland Monday night. Later.